Hello everyone, welcome into the Lantern Church. Tonight I want to preach to you a message I've been working on lately entitled Shipwreckers. I want to start by uh, reading a few pieces of scripture out of Acts chapter 27. Uh, Paul is arrested and he's on his way to Rome. He's appealed to Caesar. It says here in verse number 9, uh, now, when much time was spent and when sailing was now dangerous, because the fast was now already past, Paul admonished them and said unto them, Sirs, I perceive that this voyage will be with hurt and much damage, not only of the lotting and ship, but also of our lives. Nevertheless, the centurion believed the master and the owner of the ship more than those things which were spoken by Paul. It's just it's just like uh, a lot of denominational churches today. They believe their own denominational creed. They believe in their church traditions uh, more than those things which are spoken of by our apostle Paul. Paul says, consider what I say, and the Lord give thee understanding in all things. Verse number 12 of Acts 27, and it says, And because the haven was not commodious to winter in, it wasn't convenient to winter in, the more part advised. You hear that? The more part advised. The majority to depart thence also. If by any means they might attain to Phoenice and there to winter, which is an haven of Crete and lieth toward the southwest, and northwests and and right after they departed what happens well verse number 13 and when the south wind blew softly supposing that they had obtained their purpose loosing thence they sailed close by crete but not long after there arose against it a tempestuous wind called euro Clydon. so right after uh they depart to it wasn't long after that uh, that uh, they ran into some trouble. And and listen, if you're going to reject and neglect the Apostle Paul, it won't be uh, too long before uh, you run into some trouble. Uh, you're in danger of shipwreck. And listen, the Apostle Paul, uh, it seemed like every time he, he stepped foot on a ship, uh, it seemed to... Uh, it seemed to wreck in Second Corinthians uh, chapter eleven. It says that uh, thrice uh, he was he was shipwrecked. Now Second Corinthians chapter eleven uh, was written before Acts chapter twenty-seven. So this is going to be Paul's fourth shipwreck. And why was there a shipwreck? Well, there was a shipwreck because they did not listen to the apostle Paul. Uh, Paul says in Acts chapter twenty-seven. It says um, in verse number uh, 21, it says, But after long abstinence, Paul stood forth in the midst of them and said, Sirs, ye should have hearkened unto me and not have loosed from Crete and to have gained this harm and, and loss. And listen, you're going to suffer loss at the judgment seat of Christ if you don't listen to the wise master builder, the one who was revealed uh, uh, the mystery and, and the body of Christ and, and all these things concerning God's purpose uh, uh, for the heavens. Uh, if, uh, if you don't listen to the Apostle Paul and you don't hearken unto him, you're going to suffer loss at the judgment seat of Christ because Paul is our apostle. Uh, we're to follow uh, our apostle as he followed uh, the Lord Jesus Christ. But what are most churches today? They're in rebellion against the apostle Paul. They're, they're in rebellion against his doctrine. They're, they're either ignorant of it or they are willfully uh, re rejecting uh, their apostle uh, for the church of uh, the body of Christ. Uh, uh, they should have listened to Paul and not have loosed uh, uh, from Crete. Uh, the good news here uh, in verse 22, it says, And now I exhort you to be of good cheer, for there shall be no loss of any man's life among you, but of the ship. Uh, uh, you, you might lose reward of the judgment seat of Christ, but you cannot lose your salvation. Your salvation is sure. 
Uh, you were sealed in the in the Holy Spirit uh, uh, of, of promise. You were sealed into the day of redemption of a new body. You will not lose your salvation, but you will lose uh, your reward at, at the judgment seat of Christ, and your works are going to be burnt up at that judgment seat uh, uh, because you didn't follow uh, the wise master builder. Uh, so Paul gives them some good news. Even though they shouldn't have lo loosed from Crete, uh, they're not going to lose. Any man is not going to on this ship is not going to lose his his life and 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 that's good news uh, uh for many out there if you've trusted the gospel of your salvation if you're on that good old gospel ship of 1 Corinthians 15 1 through 4 and you've trusted that for for salvation uh you will not lose uh, your sal salvation. We are uh, secure and sealed in the Lord Jesus Christ, and we are secure and sealed in his body. We're members of his body, of his flesh, and of his bones. Um, it, says, um, it says here, Saint Paul said, uh, for there stood by me this night the angel of God, whose I am and whom I serve, saying, fear not, Paul, Thou must be brought before Caesar, and lo, God hath given thee all them that sail with thee. Wherefore, sirs, be of good cheer, for I believe God that it shall be even as it uh, was told me. And we have reason uh, to be of good cheer tonight. If you believe God, we have reason to be of good cheer. But I want to preach to you uh, tonight uh, 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 this message uh, that uh, I've, I've been studying out, uh, a message that I entitle, uh, entitled Shipwreckers. And listen, uh, these men, because they did not listen to Paul, they, they lost, uh, they lost their, their ship. And, and uh, listen, you might, you might uh, be in the Lord Jesus Christ, but you might be uh, in, in, in the wrong church that is making a shipwreck of your faith. Uh, you have heard the advice before. Uh, be careful who you let on your ship uh, because some people will sink it because uh, they cannot be the captain. Uh, you know, this is a true statement. Uh, not everyone can be the preacher, teacher, or missionary. Uh, some people, you know, they just they just like being in charge or, or having a big title, but that's not the kind of shipwreckers uh, I have in mind tonight. Uh, I'm talking about shipwreckers of the faith and and, and of a sound mind. And and listen, uh, fa false doctrine. If you're not rooted in and grounded in the truth, uh, uh, you can be tossed to and fro, just like this ship here uh, that uh, that they were on was tossed to and fro. Right, uh, this tempestuous wind called Euro Clyden, Right, and 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 they lost uh, and they lost their ship. Uh, in the book of Ephesians, it uh, it talks about us being, uh, uh, you know. Uh, a believer can be tossed to and fro if he's not rooted and grounded uh, in, in the sound doctrine and, and, and the right things. Um, go to the book uh, uh, of Ephesians. Ephesians uh, chapter uh, number four, it says, uh, that we henceforth be no more children tossed to and fro, carried about with every wind of doctrine by the slight of men, and cunning craftiness, whereby they lie in wait uh, to deceive. You know, the body of Christ is, you know, we're, we're to be edifying one another and building one another up uh, in, in the faith, in the sound doctrine. We're, we're all to be coming in unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God unto a perfect man and to the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ, right? And then it says that we henceforth be no more uh, children. God does not want us to be children. He wants us to grow up and, and mature as a body of believers. And the only way we're going Going to do that is if we're rooted and grounded in the right things in the sound doctrine for today, which is Paul's epistles, Romans through Philemon. That's the doctrine for the church, uh, uh, the body of Christ. But there are many preachers and teachers out there today that are making a shipwreck of the faith of many, and they make a shipwreck of the faith of many because they don't rightly divide uh, the word. Uh, 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 of truth uh, 
Uh, there, there are overthrowers out there, right? Uh, that we, we, you think about that word subverted, and we're going to look at a couple passages, right? That's what that word subverted means. It means to overthrow, right? Uh, uh, you know, to to throw overboard. You know, people are uh, there are preachers and teachers that are th uh, throwing uh, uh, people's faith uh, uh, overboard, right? They're overthrowing their faith. They're making a shipwreck of the faith of others. They wreck the ship of unity of the faith by false doctrine and error, whether they do it out of ignorance of the scriptures or or by defiance. And there are many preachers who do it by defiance, right? Because they want to keep their uh, their circle of friends, because they want to keep their place and uh, in 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 religion and their title and in in their in their denominational church and and they want to keep their paycheck, right? They they don't want to. Uh, they don't want to lose anything for Christ. They don't want to count all things uh, uh, but loss for the excellency of the knowledge of Christ Jesus. They don't want to do those things, right? Because you know they 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 don't want they don't want to have to lose uh, anything. So so they they defy the scriptures. They do it by defiance, and they won't preach and teach. Uh, 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 they won't they won't preach and teach Jesus Christ according to the revelation. Uh, of of the mystery, but whether people or preachers are doing it by ignorance or or, or defiance, uh, it has caused much division and and, and friction uh, in in the body of Christ. Uh, uh, go to First Corinthians chapter one. First Corinthians chapter number one. All right. You turn there. In 1 Corinthians chapter number 1, verse number 8, it says, God is faithful, even when men aren't, God is faithful, by whom ye were called unto the fellowship of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. We're in the fellowship of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. All these preachers, teachers talking out there saying, oh, oh, you can lose your fellowship. No, I'm in the fellowship uh, uh, of the Lord Jesus Christ. Right? Uh, God does not play the hokey pokey with His children. Right? If if I if I were to do something I'm not supposed to do uh, tonight or, or or tomorrow, you know, God's not you know playing the hokey pokey with me. You know, uh, putting me in and taking me out and putting me back in. That's that's not how God is working here in the dispensation of grace. We're called unto the fellowship of His Son. Jesus Christ our Lord. I'm in fellowship with the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. And God is not playing hokey pokey with me uh, 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 tonight. And he's not playing hokey pokey with you either. It says, Now I beseech you, brethren, by the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, that you all speak the same thing. Are we all speaking the same thing? All these churches out here in the New River Valley, are they all speaking the same thing? I would say that they're not. You go to the Methodist Church, the Lutheran Church, Church, the Nazarene Church, right? The Methodist Church, the Baptist Church, the uh, the Southern Baptist Church, the Free Will Baptist, the Independent Fundamental Baptist Church, right? The Pentecostal Church, the the Pentecostal Holiness Church. They're all preaching and teaching something different to you, right? They're not all speaking the same things because they're not all in, in line with God's word and, and the sound doctrine of God's word for the day, right? For today, it says now I beseech your brethren by the the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, that ye all speak the same thing. Why? And that there be no divisions among you, right? If we're not all speaking the same thing, guess what? And we're all believing something different, right? We're all, there's going to be divisions amongst us, right? And there were divisions amongst them because they weren't really following God. They were following a bunch of men, right? Because they were carnal. They were carnal Christian babies, right, that were after the flesh and not after the spirit, right? Now I beseech you, brethren, by the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, that ye all, that ye all speak the same thing, and that there be no divisions among you, but that ye be perfectly joined together in the same mind and in the same judgment, right? God wants us to have discernment. Right, for it hath been declared unto me of you, my brethren, by them which are of the house of Chloe, that there are contentions among you. Now this I say, that every one of you saith, I am of Paul, and I of Apollos, and I of Cephas, and I of Christ. 
Is Christ divided? Was Paul crucified for you? Or were you baptized in the name of Paul? They were divided. Uh, they were divided over men, and Paul told them, "Listen, we're just we're just ministers, by whom you believed, right?" Paul said, "I planted, Apollos watered, but but God is the one who gave the increase, right?" But 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 you see here, our fellowship tonight. It's it's not about us being in in the same ship. Uh, you can all be, uh, you, you can you can all be in in the same ship. All right, and, and have have a different mind about things. All right, two people can be in the same ship. One wants to row this way. One wants to uh, one wants to row north, and the other wants to row wants to row south. Right, you you can be in the same ship and 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 be a, in disagreement uh, with one another. That's that's not fellowship. Fellowship is just not believers in the you know uh in the same ship it's having it's having the same mind it's having the same judgment right it's it's us all being joined together in that same mind and, and same judgment right it's it's being in line with with god's word right and, and when we're in line with god's word right and uh, we we can we can speak the same things right and we won't have that division amongst us right Fellowship is not just being, uh, not just uh, uh, about us being in, in the same ship. Go to Ephesians chapter uh, number four again. Ephesians chapter number four. God wants unity in his body. That is for sure. But there's a lot of disunity in the church, right? There's a lot of shipwreckers out there uh, tonight. Uh, verse number one in Ephesians four says, "I therefore, the prisoner of the Lord, beseech you that ye walk worthy of the vocation wherewith ye are called, with all lowliness and meekness, with long suffering, forbearing one another in love, endeavoring to keep the unity of the Spirit in the bond of peace." How do we do that? There is one body. And one spirit, even as you are called, and one hope of your calling, one Lord, one faith, one baptism. Now that gets people arguing. The baptism for today is us, us being baptized into that one body. One baptism, one God and Father of all, who is above all and through all and in you all. Right? We, we have to be diligent to, and, and, and make an effort to, to keep the unity of the Spirit and the bond of peace. Right, And for us to be able to do that, we all have to be growing towards the same things, to the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ. Right? We all have to be in, in that... Uh, in that process of growing, of growing into that and coming into the knowledge of the Son of God and to this perfect man, all of us together, not just one believer over here and the rest are all up, are, 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 are all off in oblivion somewhere, in outer space somewhere. That's not what God wants. God wants us all corporately to be to be growing together in the knowledge of the Son of God. Right? And our, but our unity, it's, it, it's suffering today because we're not all doing that. You got a bunch of shipwreckers out there uh, tonight. Our unity is, is, is suffering and we're not striving for the faith of the gospel as, as we should because of these shipwreckers. Right? You, got, you got churches out there that don't even know the gospel. They, they think that they're preaching the gospel of the kingdom. They're preaching that the, the kingdom is at hand. Right, they're re they're preaching Acts two thirty eight. Repent and be baptized. They don't know nothing about uh, justification by the by the faith of Jesus Christ. Right? They 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 don't they don't they don't even there are churches that don't even preach the, preach the cross and preach the blood out there. Right? So you got all these churches out there. You got all uh, you know you got all these people out there just preaching and teaching these the, these different things and and. And, and and you got so many people just not on uh, the same page, right? Um, they're they're contrary. They're contrary to the doctrine and faith for today. Look at Romans. Romans chapter number sixteen. Let 
2016. Verse number 17, it says, Now I beseech you, brethren, mark them which cause divisions and offenses contrary to the doctrine which ye have learned. What Paul just preached and taught in the previous 15 chapters. Right? Mark them which cause divisions. Romans is a foundational book for our faith today. Mark them which cause divisions and offenses contrary to the doctrine, which ye have learned and avoid them. Right? I just recently left a church that that were that was contrary to, to the doctrine. They weren't preaching it. Right? Instead they were just preaching these little five five point sermons and they you know they barely touched Paul. And when they preached Paul, they were taking him out of context. All right? They were just taking a, a little little phrase here and they and they turned it into into something and made made the message something that that the made it something that's not that it's not. All right? And that's what a lot of preachers and teachers do. They'll take a little little phrase here and they'll build their whole whole message on there and and you know and they'll say oh what great preaching oh what a great service we had tonight but they you know wind up taking everything out of context and you don't really understand the passage right and they give their little you know three point five point sermons on things and 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 there's no real study of the bible real study of the scripture comparing spiritual things to spiritual things I'm just not going to sit in a church like that, and I'm not going to have my family sit in a church like that. Right? Well, I could teach them, teach them myself. Right? Uh, for they that are such serve not our Lord Jesus Christ. Do you hear that? You're not serving the Lord Jesus Christ. You might be doing a lot of things. You might be doing a lot of churchy things tonight, but are you serving the Lord Jesus Christ? You're not if you're contrary to the doctrine. But their own belly... They serve their own fleshly appetites. That's a lot of men today. All right? All because they want good standing in their denominations. But do you got good standing with God? Amen. All right? And Jesus Christ, you do, right? But your works are going to come at, uh, up at the judgment seat of Christ. So you're going to give an account for, for your ministry. All right? Is your ministry work going to all be burnt up? It says, but their own belly, they serve their own belly, and by good words and fair speeches, there it is. Good words and 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 fair speeches, right? Paul, he didn't use enticing words of man's wisdom, right? What are these good words and fair speeches? It's it's language artfully adapted to captivate the hearer. Who wants to captivate you tonight? It's the devil. He's the one who wants to take you captive. All right? Um, go to 2 Timothy. He's the one who wants to take you captive tonight. And, and you know what? Satan has ministers tonight. He'd be, you'd be foolish not to think that he doesn't. All right? Look at this. Verse number 24, 2 Timothy 2, 24. And the servant of the Lord must not strive, but be gentle unto all men. You know, I have to work on that. <laughs> I've got a lot of things to work on in this passage, right? Learning not to, you know, want to to fight and, and uh, you know, lash out and be get angry, you know, at people. It says, and the servant of the Lord must not strive, but be gentle. Unto all men, apt to teach, patient. That's hard sometimes. It's hard to be patient with some men because you, you just want them to get it. You want other you want other believers to get the same thing that you're getting because you want to have that 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 unity. You want to have that 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 bond together, right? It says in meekness, instructing those that oppose themselves. If God peradventure will give them repentance to the acknowledging of the truth. All right? So they have to acknowledge that that the things that 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 
you know, that Paul said are, are according to, to truth, right? They have, they have to repent of the bad doctrine and, and, and acknowledge the truth. And that they may recover themselves out of the snare of the devil who are taken captive by him at his will. And that, bring, that brings in mind another piece of scripture. Second uh, Corinthians chapter number 10 says, at verse number 4, For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God are the pulling down of strongholds, casting down imaginations and every high thing that exalteth itself against the knowledge of God, and bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. Every thought. You know, man had man has a lot of uh, wicked uh, imaginations about things, right? And and there's a, there's a lot in Christianity that have been brainwashed by by Satan's ministers in in the church and. Satan, he does have ministers, doesn't he? Right? It says, And no marvel. 2 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 14, it says, And no marvel, for Satan himself is transformed into an angel of light. Therefore, it is no great thing if his ministers also be transformed as the ministers of righteousness, whose end shall be according uh, to their works. We need to bring every thought into captivity to the obedience of Christ. Uh, you know, we, we have a job to do, right? Uh, uh, we, we pull down these strongholds by u using the Word of God, all right? Ephesians chapter 6 talks about the, the sword, the sword of the Spirit, that's, which is the Word of God, all right? That's, that's our weapon that uh, we're going to uh, wield and, and, and yield to cast down these strongholds, these these imaginations and, and strongholds uh, uh, that, that have been set up in, in people's minds, right? Because we want we want people to we want people to recover themselves out of the snare of the devil who, who've been taken captive by him, right? We want people to be set free uh, from from his his captivity, amen. Um, you know, but uh, listen. Uh, Satan has lots of ministers out there. He has he, he has lots of ministers who are making a shipwreck of the faith of others, right? And and you know they're shipwreckers because they don't listen and they don't hearken to Paul and they withstand uh, Paul's words uh, greatly. They don't consider what Paul said, and um, you know some of these men that. Uh, uh, preach contrary to, to sound doctrine. Some of these men have, have once held the truth, uh, but uh, they, they didn't hold on to it. All right. Uh, go to 1 Timothy. Go to 1 Timothy. Uh, 1 Timothy uh, chapter number 19. I mean, 1 Timothy chapter number 1, verse number 19. It says, holding faith. Well, actually, let's read verse 18 first. It says, This charge commit, I commit unto thee, son Timothy, according to the prophecies which went before on thee, that thou by them mightest war a good warfare. And we're, we're in a battle. There's a battle to, to, for, for truth out there. Right? Holding faith and a good conscience. Right, a, a, a conscience is 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 a it says holding faith and a good conscience, which some, having put away concerning faith, hath made shipwreck. Holding faith and a good conscience. Uh, a, a, your conscience is is a knowledge of, of right and wrong. So. According to according to the truth that you know, I right? they, 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 I believe these men here they knew the truth at, at one point and they were living by that truth, but they didn't hold on to it, and they put away a good conscience. Their conscience became seared with with a hot iron, and and, and your conscience can be like that too, right? They can your 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 conscience be, can become numb. You get so far away uh, from the truth. And, and so far away from the Word of God, 
uh, you, you, your your conscience can become seared. And it says these these men, uh, Hymenus and Alexander, they they put away a good conscience. They didn't hold on to the faith. Uh, but Paul, he's encouraging Timothy to hold, holding faith and a good conscience, which some, having put away concerning faith, have made shipwreck. They shipwreck their faith, and um, no doubt they were probably shipwrecking the faith of others, of whom is Hymenus and Alexander, whom I have delivered unto Satan, that they may learn not to uh, blaspheme. Um, Go to so go to Second Timothy chapter number two. Second Timothy chapter number two. Verse number two. I mean, verse number fifteen. Let's begin, let's begin here in verse number 13. It says, For we believe not, yet he abideth faithful. And we just read that in 1 Corinthians chapter 1. God is faithful. If we believe not, yet he abideth faithful, he cannot deny himself. Uh, so if you don't believe the right doctrine, uh, God's not going to cut you out of the body. He's not going to deny a member of, of his body. Uh, just like we read in, in Acts chapter number 27. All right, they lost they lost the ship, but they didn't lose their lives. Of these things, put them in remembrance, charging them before the Lord that they strive not about words to no profit, but to the subverting of the hearers. That word subverting, to subvert, is to overthrow. Study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. All right, there are things that are that are different in the Bible. Uh, there, there, there are differences between the body of Christ and, and Israel, rightly dividing the word of truth. Right? Not, uh, it, you know, you're not, we're not, I mean, yes, we need to know the difference between, uh, we, we need to know the difference between, between good and evil and, you know, certainly we need to know what's, what's good and what, you know, and what's evil. Uh, but the things we're going to divide in the in the Bible, it'll have a lot to do with you know seeing seeing the differences and distinctions in in the Bible. Not everything is the same. There are there are differences and and distinctions in the different dispensations and how God is dealing uh, with man. Uh, it says, "But shun profane, profane." We get that word profanity. It's 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 unclean. It's it's defiled. But shun profane and vain babblings. Babble, babble is is language, for they will increase unto more ungodliness, and their word will eat, as doeth a canker. A canker is something cancerous. It's 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 something spreading, and false doctrine does that. It's some, that's why it's so dangerous. It it spreads, right. Of whom is Hymenus and Philetus, who concerning the truth have erred. Right? They erred from the truth, saying that the resurrection is past already. They put the resurrection in the wrong place on the timeline. We need to follow God's timeline. God has a timeline of things and how he's revealed things. All right, it's best to follow his timeline and not try uh, to, you know, to make our own to fit to. Uh, you know, to fit, you know, what we believe, we need to believe what God uh, says to believe. Amen. We need to follow his timeline on things. Amen. And we need to study these things in the Bible, saying that the resurrection is past already. And remember, we read that word subverting of the hearers, right? And overthrow the faith of some. But here's the good news tonight. Nevertheless, the foundation of God standeth sure. Having this seal, the Lord knoweth them that are his, and let everyone that nameth the name of Christ depart from iniquity. And listen, false doctrine, error, it's, it's iniquity. Amen? It's sin. All right, and why do they turn others aside? Why are they, you know, why are they doing these things? Well, I believe a lot of it has to do I believe a lot of it has to do with 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 pride 
and money. Uh, in First Timothy chapter, First Timothy chapter number six. All right. Verse number three, if any man teach otherwise and consent not to wholesome words, even the words of our Lord Jesus Christ, and to the doctrine was a, which is according to godliness. So the doctrine leads to godliness. The, prof, the, the profane and, and uh, vain babblings, those, those lead to ungodliness, but sound doctrine leads to godliness. And to the doctrine which is according to godliness, he is proud, knowing nothing. Some strong words. Some some strong. That's strong language. But doting about questions. They, these men, they love to argue. All right, strifes of words to no profit. All right, and strifes of words whereof cometh envy, strife, railings, evil surmisings, perverse disputings of men of corrupt minds, and destitute of the truth. They don't got it, folks. Supposing that gain is godliness, you know these men. They think because they have big churches, they have the the the, the pews uh, filled every Sunday, and they have big offerings, and they have nice fancy churches. They think they think that they have they have all these things because they're doing the right things, and that they have the blessing of God. And ministers like me, just sitting on my front front porch and preaching and teaching in my home. Oh, those men, they don't have God's blessing on them. They certainly couldn't have that. Have you read about the Apostle Paul and all the things he suffered? Have you read 2 Corinthians chapter uh, number uh, uh, number 11 and all the things Paul went through? All right. I'd say God's blessing was upon him, don't you? All right. Paul was God's man, right? That was God's, that was God's sent apostle to the Gentiles. They suppose that gain is godliness. From such withdraw thyself. You know, and and listen, they do a lot of these things for money, for filthy lucre, right? Uh, let's read on. It says, But godliness with contentment is great gain, for we brought nothing into this world. Uh, and it is certain we can carry nothing out, and having food and raiment, let us be therewith content. But they that will be rich fall into temptation and a snare, and into many foolish and hurtful lusts, and which drown men in destruction and perdition. All right, what happens when a, when a ship wrecks? Some, sometimes some, some men drown, don't they? Right? You'll drown if you're uh, going after money. Right? If you're seeking money, if you love money, for the love of money is the root of all evil, which while some coveted after they have erred from the faith. They erred. Remember what we just read, right? Uh, in, in 2 Corinthians, uh, I mean, 2 Timothy, uh, uh, 2, Tim 2 Timothy chapter uh, number 2, we just read, how Hymenus and Philetus that they that they erred concerning the truth. Right? Maybe they were after money. Maybe they loved money, which is the root of all evil, which while some coveted after, they have erred from the faith, the sound doctrine, and pierced themselves through with many sorrows. It's not uh, it's not it's not all it's puffed up to be, is it? Right? To live in a life of luxury and chasing after money, right? It'll It'll wind up uh, causing much sorrow uh, in your life, right? But uh, you know, many that's 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 why they err from the truth. That's why they um, that's why they defy it because they love money. Um, and Titus, uh, Titus chapter uh, number one, it says um, in the Titus chapter one. Verse number nine, it says, Holding fast the faithful word as he hath been taught, talking about a bishop, that he may be able by sound doctrine both to exhort and to convince the gainsayers, those that are opposed, right? those that oppose themselves. For there are many unruly and vain talkers and deceivers, especially they of the circumcision, whose mouths must be stopped, 
who subvert whole houses, teaching things which they ought not. And why do they do it? For filthy lucre's sake. For filthy lucre's sake. Right? And look here in Titus chapter number 3. And we'll, we'll close with this. But avoid foolish questions. Titus 3, 9. And genealogies and contentions and strivings about the law, for they are unprofitable and vain. A man that is an heretic. All right? A heretic is someone who is divisive. divisive. He causes... He causes division, right? It's, it's, it's a man who chooses his own ideas over God's. A man that is an heretic after the first and second admonition, right? A, a, a servant of the Lord must, must not strive, but be gentle, right? We read that. Uh, this is gentle reproof. A man that is an heretic after the first and second admonition reject. If he rejects the truth, there ain't nothing you can do but, 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 but pray for him and leave him in God's hands. Knowing that he that is such is subverted. All right, that word subvert means to overthrow. All right, his, he, he's subverted. He's overthrown. <laughs> All right, and sinneth being condemned of himself. Shipwreckers. All right, they shipwreck themselves, and they're shipwrecking the faith of others. Are you a shipwrecker tonight? Amen. Are you a shipwrecker, or are you on, or, or is, uh, or are you on the 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 right ship, right? To a ship that uh, that 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 is growing and. And being edified in, in, in the sound words, right? In the, in, the, in the sound doctrine. Amen. Or are you uh, in a church that's, that's shipwrecking your faith, right? By uh, that sh old shipwrecker, uh, Satan, in, in, in the pulpit. Amen. There are many shipwreckers out there uh, uh, in, in, in the ministry uh, today. You better watch out. Uh, you better be careful. All right, and they shipwreck themselves and they shipwreck the faith of others because they don't hearken to the words of the Apostle Paul. Amen. And there's much danger ahead for those uh, uh, who don't uh, consider uh, what Paul said. You're going to miss out at the judgment uh, seat of Christ. You're going you're gonna to lose out on your reward. You're going you're gonna to suffer loss. Amen. But the good news is, is that you won't. Uh, suffer uh, the loss of your salvation because your salvation is not based upon you and what you do. It's based upon the finished work of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ.